Hello guys, good day and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kuri. Hope you guys are doing good. So today's tutorial will be making this kaftan shirt. Is it kaftan bubu or butterfly shirt? So one of it. So I'm going to be drafting it on a pattern paper. Then I will cut it on my fabric. I'm not going to use the pattern paper to cut it on my fabric. I'm just using the pattern paper to il illustrate it so that it will be very very obvious to the camera and for you to understand it perfectly well before you can draft it on your main fabric so we are going to be starting what you need is your pattern paper. please if you are doing this just cut directly on your fabric there's no need to draft it on the pattern paper so but i'm just drafting it on the pattern paper for you to understand so this is my pattern paper now what i'll do is to is that i'll fold it into two this way by length this is the length from here to here is the length so i'm folding it into two by length that's how you should fold yours on your fabric, fold it by the length. Don't fold it by width. This is the width. The width is like this. The length is like this. So fold it by length so that it will give you the actual length that you want and the wideness that you want. So once you have it, once you have it folded this way, I'm going to divide this. Why I'm dividing it is because I want to add a button stand allowance. It has a button. You can actually not add it then. At the end of the making the fabric, cutting it, you can add a button hole stand. Well, this is the easiest part and it will come out very neat because the other part will be maybe difficult because you have to start cutting a strap to start adding to it. But if you do it this way, I think this way is better and easier. So I'm going to slit it open. Why I, I slitted it open is for me to divide the front and the back because the because it, it, the, it's actually the front that has the button stand. So this is the, let's assume this is the back and this is the front. I'll make sure that it's equal. So I'm going to fold it. I'll place this and just use as the this as the front part. So I'll place it this way. Then I'll mark out my buttonhole stand. Assume it's, it's on your fabric. You are marking two inches or one point five inches button stand. So let's assume that this is my fabric. I'm marking one point five inches or two inches. So mark two inches. So this is what I have: two inches for my button stand. I'll connect the lines very well. I'll just connect these lines. This is button stand. This is the button stand. I'll label it button stand. So that is button stand. So the next thing now is to get this. I will get the back part and make sure that it's equal. It aligns very well. Go ahead and run a straight stitch on this from the back. So but I'll just draft it and close it up because you're still going to open it. So this is the back. This is the back. I'll place it this way and make sure that why I want to draft it, um, why I'm using the front is because of the neckline. Let me not start tracing it again. Maybe after cutting the back neckline, I will just cut the front without having to start tracing it again. So I'll just get my pin and pin it so that it will be in place. I'll also pin this other side. So look at the one inch will come out here. So the next thing now is to trim off this one inch because we need it to be equal. So once you have it done this way, the next thing is to get your shoulder measurements, your shoulder measurements or across shoulder measurement. So from your the nip of your neckline, extend it to where you want your sleeve to be uh, done. To get to. so let's assume my shoulder is 7.5 that is 15 inches divided by 2 7.5 please i'm just using a lower mark because i'm drafting this on the pattern paper so i'm using five here and let's assume that from that 7.5 or you just place your tape it's a full it's a long sleeve so you just place your tape and measure where you want the sleeve to end so from here to where i want it remember that it has a band to the place from the nape of your neckline the back neckline you measure so i've measured and i have 30 so I'm minus three inches for band. It has a band, a cuff band. So it's 30 that I have. So I can make it 28 or something. So it's 30 that I have. So I will place with your shoulder and everything is 30. So I'm I'm going to place 30 from this button stand instead of marking your shoulder and all that. So it just gets your um your together shoulder straight. So I will place now. Let's assume that my together shoulder is this. Whatever length I have here will be my together shoulder plus um minus three inches band. Minus three inches band is 27 inches. So I will mark 27 inches because we are going to add a band to the wrist. So this is the 27 inches. Ignore the shoulder parts now. So from that 20, 27 inches, we are going to do our shoulder slope. Uh, from that 27 inches, I will go down by one inch. So the next thing now is to measure your ample opening. That is the round, your round slit opening. You can just determine how many you want to go down with. So I will just measure how tight or how loose I want it. I have here eight inches. It's not super tight. It's not super loose. So I will just um I'll just input eight inches. But this is um this is on the pattern paper. I'll use a shorter number. So you just input eight inches for the round armhole opening. Eight inches. So that is my eight inches. I will do the armhole 
I'll do the shoulder to the from here now. Okay, the neckline now will not determine the neckline. This is a shirt. It's more like a shirt. It's not too wide. So it depends on what you want. I'm going to use 2.5 inches neck, your neck uh, width. So the depth is 2.5 inches also. You can make, or you can make it three by three. Then the back is one inch. I don't want it to come out too wide. The, the best thing is so if you are drafting a shirt, it's always to get a smaller number. So if you feel that it's too tight after joining the shoulder, I can now still trim it off. So I always use 2.5 inches to 3 inches anytime I'm drafting a shirt. So this is it. I'll connect the uh, front neckline. You know, you will extend it to this uh, ample stand. So I'll also connect the back neckline, which is also going this way. So I'll now do the shoulder slope. I'll connect from that one inch to the neckline this way this is what we have so we'll now have this opening please i'm just saying eight inches here for me if okay so i've separated the back on the front i'll just show you the next thing to do just the boxing stand and we've taken the shoulder slope and everything so you will get the whiteness of your um the, how you want your um your sleeve to be white so i use seven inches for so the one i made i use seven inches you can use six inches six inches will be okay at least you can pass your your hand freely so it's better you use six inches here so once you get that six inches you are going to notch it you are going to notch it you are going to notch it this way so you just notch it so this is the point our sleeve is going to start from here is where we are going to show so this is the whiteness now you know that i mean the whiteness that you want you know that i used uh, before i made use of 27 but i set it to now use 30. so i ended up using the 30 like the full length of the dress i used the full length of the dress so you just measure it. You are not going to cut anything out if you're making this. You're just going to use this. Assuming this is your dress, your fabric, you're just going to use the full measurement for you to get that full length, for you to get the whiteness. So you're not going to cut anything out. You're not going to start covering it as if you are taking your hip measurement or your waist measurement. There's no other measurement. You don't need any measurement. So you just what you need is just the sleeve part that you notch. That's the only thing you need here. So once you have it like this, once you have it like this, you are going to also notch this your bottom stand. You are going to notch your bottom stand and separate them. So you know that the front is higher than the back, like the front is shorter than the back. So from this shoulder point, you now determine the length you want for your front. If I use 30 inches, my front is 30 inches or 31 inches, it depends on how you want it to cover. Then also you now determine the full length. This should be my full length. The full length I use is 45 inches, both for the back. The full length for the back is 45 inches. Or you are going to get this place 45 inches because this place will remain that 45 inches. It's only the front that will be shorter. So let's assume, uh, assume that this is on your fabric and you are using the same inches I used. I used 30 inches, or you can make it 32 inches. So after folding, you have around 31, 30. So uh, I'll say let me use 14 inches here. But in the reasons, if you're making yours, you can use 30 inches or 28, 30. So so this is the four, 14 inches here and maybe this is the 30 inches on your fabric so you are going to start coming from here you are going, it has a slant curve so you call from this if I, the curve will start from this button stand you curve and go like this just as if you want to draw an s if you want to write an s so you will come this way and curve if you look at the thumbnail very well you notice that this place is high and this place is somehow short and this place is going to rhyme with the back so you make your your curve you draw your curve this way then you make an s s as if you are just drawing an s that is what you need for the front. Please know that you are not cutting the back this way. The back is just straight. It doesn't have any curve. So once you have the front this way, you are going to cut it out. You are going to follow the line and cut it out. So this this is still going to align with the back. So you are going to open slit open your button stand here. Yeah? You just normal way you make your shirt. This button stand is normal way you make your shirt. So this is it. You notch it. So this is what you will have. This is how the front is going to look. This is how the front is going to look. So the front is going to look this way. Okay, so it's, this is how it's going to look. So for you to start joining it, the first thing you will do. For you to start joining it, the first thing you will do is to is to fold in the button allowance. You are going to just the way you fold your shares, fold in maybe quarter of an inch, then fold in your button allowance. So it also do the same thing here. So after folding it in, I will show you the next thing to do. Yes, I should that for it in form. Blue gold, blue gold. Blue, blue. So I've made this already. I don't want to start. I'll just show you. I'll just demonstrate everything. If you are following this method, it will come out very well. I didn't really record it from. When I was making it because I made it overnight, so I didn't really record it, but I'm just going to show you the steps. So assuming let's assume that you folded it just so it's straight. I'm just going to comb it. 
so that you understand what I'm doing. Please, you're not going to use your glue gun. You're going to go to your machine to uh, join the, to hold down the button stand. So you're going to go to your machine to hold it down. So you'll be needing like three and a half fabric for this if you want it to come out really, really um, full. If you want it to come out very full. So you cut out two and a half for this, then one inch for one yard for the um, ruffles you are going to uh, attach by the side. At the side of the dress, it has this ruffle. So this is how the front is going to look like. Remember that you are going to cut the neckline before that. So once you are done joining your button stand and holding down your button stand, this is what you will have. This is what you are going to have. This is what you are going to have. So the next thing now is to cut your ruffle. So I will get what I will use as a ruffle, then show you that is the next thing. I'm going to be demonstrating it on this fabric for you to understand it better. So here is the front. I'm going to have to fold the zip allowance. Please, you have to maybe fold it or you can hem it and just fold it once. Or well, I've folded the front and this is how it's looking. So here is the front. You have to have two pieces for the front. So here is the front. So once you fold it like this, you're going to place it together, right side facing each other, and check if they are equal, if the length is equal. If it's not equal, trim off the longer one for it to be equal. So I'll trim off this one for this place to be equal. Make sure that here it's equal. And here is the back. The back is going to be on the fold. You're not going to open the back. So here is the back of the dress. Here is the neckline of the back. So this is the back. Here's the back. The next thing you're going to do is to join the shoulder. You're going to bring the front part and place it shoulder to shoulder. You're going to place it like this, shoulder to shoulder. So you're placing it like this. You're going to fold to the end of the, to the end of the sleeves. You're going to join the sleeve. So just join the shoulder. Also do the same thing here. So I'll do it and show you how we're going to cut the rough that we're going to be attaching to the side of the um, dress. So this the extra. You need maybe one yard of fabric for the side to attach to the side. You need maybe one yard, or if you want it very thin, you can use one and a half. You can use one, but half inch will not be enough, and the length should be by 60. So, because you are going to gather it a bit. So, what I did, the way I got my ruffle is this. So, this is, let's assume this is the ruffle that I'm going to use. So, now the amount of your fabric will determine the wideness you are going to use. So, let's assume that the wideness I use is not really bold for me because I was just managing my fabric. I got three years, it was not really bad. I would have gotten three and a half for me to achieve what I wanted. So, this is it. This is the wideness that I'm going to be using. Let's say that on fold, this is thick. So on fold, I'm going to have maybe 10 inches wideness. So on fold, I'm going to have, let's say this is on fold like this, you are going to have 10 inches. So once you have 10 inches, you are going to cut it. Please, you are cutting this, you are cutting it on fold. You are cutting it on fold. So once you have 10 inches, I'm just assuming, that, like I use six inches for my own because it was not enough so this is let's say you are making yours you can use six inches or ten inches so this will not really give me another ten inches so i'll just go with whatever this one gives me so this is i'm making just use for your wideness you can decide to use six inches or ten inches you can decide to use six inches or ten inches but note that you're making this on four you're cutting it on four for you to have that fullness so this is eight inches because of this tutorial i'll just divide it and use for four inches because you still need another material for the cuff it has a band and the color so I'll just use for four inches for because of the tutorial. So this is what I have. The length should be like 60 inches, or you can add to the length if you want it very uh um, if you want much ruffles and fullness. So this is this. I'm going to go to my machine now. Once you have it, I think this is the six inches. You come to this place, this edge, you close up this place, you close up this area, then so maybe three inches down. Once you close it up, you show three inches from here to here, three inches and stop or four inches from here to here, three inches. You also do the same thing here. From here to here, you close it up. But from one side should be longer than the other. So if that place is three inches, you are making this place maybe four inches or five inches. Because this is the, the the longer part will be down. The place that is three inches will be up. So I'll close it and show you guys what I'm saying. So I'm gonna have to join the shoulder. And this is what I have. This is one part of the shoulder. This is one part of the shoulder, and this is the second one. Here's the second one. So the next thing you will do. After joining the shoulder, it's just to check if it's equal. If it's not equal, if there's any excess, you trim it off. So if you have any excess here, you just trim it off. Then remember the notch that you made for the sleeve. So this is the place that my sleeve is going to start from. That is the notch. And so I've gone ahead to do this. I've gone ahead to stitch it. This I stitch it from here. I close this here to here, three inches. Here to here, five inches. So once you are done, you are going to pull it out. You are going to pull it out this way. So you pull it out this way. So you get the part that is three. So you after pulling it out, you join it this way. Then you start from here. 
use your loose stitch, gather stitch, and just stitch it, um, just sew it straight down, straight up to this point. Don't make it to get to this place. So I'll just stitch it and show you the next thing to do. So I gather stitch to gather it. So I'm going to draw it. I'm going to gather it. So I'll gather it like this. I'm not going to gather it too much. And if you are gathering it, make sure that it's up to the length that you want it to even be uh, longer. So I'll gather it. It's in Africa, I'm looking at you. They post this in online, you're coming out. So once you finish gathering it, this is what you're going to have. This is what you're going to have. So, so the one that take here. So once you are done that drain it, you are going to get that part that you notched, that sleeve part that you notched. You notch it very well for you to know. You notch it very well. So you are going to go to your machine. You are going to sew this place. You are going to sew it this way. You are just going to sew in half inch. And you come in maybe half inch. That half inch, after coming in half inch, you are going to cuff it like this. Use your tape, use your chalk and do it before sewing it. Just come in half inch then, cuff it like this with your chalk. Just come down by one inch, stitch, then stop at one inch. So you are going to stitch from here and stop at one inch. So I'll just stitch like this and stop at one inch. You are stitching through the back, from the back. So once you stitch it and stop at one inch, you are going to get that place that is three inches. You are going to get it, then open it. Remember that you have stitched it and you stop at one inch. Then you place this. This is the part that is... So this is the part that is three inches. You are going to place it like this. Get this rough part. You are going to place it. You place it on this, you open it, that part that is, you stitch up to one inch, you open it and place it on. So you are going to get the part, the part that is three inches will be um, close to the sleeve part. That is the one you are going to attach between the one inch. So you just attach it in between. The right side, it will be in um, inside the clothes. I don't know how to explain it but this is how you should attach it please look at it very well then the five inches the, the part that is five inches will go down you are not going to stitch everything all the way down so once you get to the part of that five inches you are going to stop there please watch what i'm doing very well but you have to fold this before you start attaching the rough you have to fold the damp part so the five inches is going to be down or you can it can be more than five inches it depends on how or how you want it to fall so i'll stop at when i'm closing it i'll stop half uh, like one inch before the main line so that i'll be able to hem it very well once you are done attaching the rough foot the next thing to to the next thing to do is to attach the band so you are going to get your your dusting your band is my the band that i use is three inches the length is three inches then the wideness determine uh, determine on your sleeve so you are going to place that uh your top on uh, you are going to measure around the sleeve part so what whatever you have you are going to cut it on the and this is the band like this so you're going to cut it on fold so on fold i have four inches then the damp part i'm uh on fold i have 4.5 inches then the damp part the part that is going towards the wrist is four inches just to give it a little slant so once you get it just slant it you are cutting two pieces of that so you are going to close the smallest part the smallest part you are going to just join it with uh, uh, a straight stitch then flip the right side so i'll go to my machine and do it and show you guys the next thing to do so here i'm done attaching the rope and this is what i have here's the front part of here yes here's the rough part here's the rough part and this is the other rough part so the next thing now is to attach your band the next thing to do is to attach your band here is my band. Please iron a light interface on this. That is the lightest one. Just to give it weight. Because especially if you are using a light fabric, it's best to uh, use the light fabric so that it will flow very well. So once we have it like this, once we are done stitching this place, we are going to have it like this. So the next thing now is to place it on each other. Then cover this place, stitch it with half inch. When you are done stitching it with half inch, then you turn it to the right side. You are going to have something like this. So for you to ask, start attaching it, once you close it, you bring this side that has a side seam. After closing it, you bring the side that has a side seam. So place it on this part that has a side seam also and stitch it around. 
So this is it. This is how it's going to look. This is how it's going to look. So this is the part that has the side seam. Then place it, this side seam to this side seam, placing each other, then you start sewing around. So once you sew it around, this is what you will have. I think this is looking very beautiful already. I'll just look for the baby here and make it to her. So this is it. I can't wait on the mannequin because yeah, but once you follow this step, once you've been following me and this step, you will achieve it, you will achieve the full result. So this is how it's going to look. So this is how it's going to look. And yet to hem the damn part, but this is it. This is how it's going to look. So please if if you find this tutorial interesting, please make sure to like and share. So this is the final look out. Um, so this is it. This is it. I will attach the second back. Hem it, then attach the the color is just a short color. If you've been following, I have a story on how to make the color. You just make only the color stand without attaching the color for so that is just the color. I'm not going to make it just a short color or just cut that wrap that a bit um a color stand. It's only the color stand without the color for please check my video on how to cut a color. You will see how I make only the stand and not the four. So this is the final this is the part. So this is looking very beautiful. I love the color of everything. So thank you guys for watching.